okay uh, welcome again to the course on mechanics of materials today our topic will be combined loadings we will be trying to analyze the machine elements or, or some machine elements which are subjected to different types of loading conditions which are subject to what we call as the combined loading conditions as far as the combined loading conditions are concerned till now we have been discussing the machine element which was subject to axial load a machine element which was subjected to torsion axial load only torsion only beams which were subjected to bending and beams which had shear forces developed in them but now onwards in this chapter we will be analyzing the machine element or the structural components which are subjected to all these loads at one time i mean to say simultaneously the machine element will be subjected to axial load it will be subjected to torsion it will be subjected to bending and shearing when we have a machine element subjected to all these loads simultaneously we call that loading condition as a combined loading condition this chapter will make us focus on the concept of the combined loadings but <clears throat> before we understand the concept of the combined loading we need to understand very very important theory that's called the theory of pressure vessels okay as far as the pressure vessels are concerned look at the first page of the book or what has been placed on your screen as well the figure out here the picture that is out here this picture this picture this picture this picture shows a container something which we often see when we visit hospitals when we visit uh, industrial plants or we often see these types of uh, machine elements or we see these types of uh, compartments or these types of vessels we see they are loaded on the back of on the rear of uh, trucks as well okay these vessels are used for transportation of petrol kerosene okay or uh, these are also used for transportation of water so on and so forth as far as these vessels are concerned these vessels are called pressure vessels and the smallest pressure vessel you must have seen uh, you know on a mechanic shop in a mechanic shop you often see the pressure vessels which are you know the parts of the the compressor okay the compressor is simply a pressure vessel in itself so before we understand the concept of combined loading what's very important for us is to understand what we mean by thin walled pressure vessels as far as the pressure vessels are concerned we have two types of pressure vessels if you look at this pressure vessel the shape of this pressure vessel is cylindrical this pressure vessel is called the this pressure vessel we'll be calling as this is the cylindrical pressure vessel okay so we say that this is cylindrical pressure vessel because its shape is cylindrical okay this is cylindrical okay sometimes we have the pressure vessels which will not be in cylindrical shape but which will be in the shape of the sphere okay some which will be like this we have sometimes pressure vessels uh, which whose shape is spherical shape such pressure vessels are called spherical pressure vessels look here here we have the cylindrical pressure vessel and this is a spherical pressure vessel this is a spherical pressure vessel at the bottom and this is a cylindrical pressure vessel at the top okay so so we have based on the shape of the pressure vessels we can have a cylindrical pressure vessel or at the same time we can have the spherical pressure vessel so based on shape you can say that we have that we are having the cylindrical pressure vessel we can talk of the cylindrical pressure vessel and we can have the spherical pressure vessel this is important okay so this is cylindrical pressure vessel we can have a spherical pressure vessel now the question is these are vessels why these are called the pressure vessels these are pressure vessels because these vessels will be used for containing fluids they are used for holding or containing fluids they contain fluids okay for example the containers will be used for holding petroleum they may be used for holding gaseous products okay or they may be holding water whatever they hold that essentially is in the form of the fluid okay so as far as these fluids are concerned these fluids exert pressure on these pressure walls so a pressure vessel so as far as these pressure vessels because of the pressurized fluid inside them 
because of the pressurized fluid inside them, the fluid exerts pressure on the walls of the pressure vessel. That's why these are called the pressure vessels, okay? These are pressure vessels. We call these vessels as pressure vessels because the fluid inside them is at pressure, that is at a high pressure as compared to the atmospheric pressure and it exerts the pressure on the walls of these vessels. That's why we call them as the pressure vessel, okay? As far as the application of these pressure vessels is concerned, I have said that these are used for transportation of water. You use pressure vessels for transportation of water. You use pressure vessels for the transportation of petroleum products, like we use it for the transportation of fuel, that may be gas, that may be diesel, okay, that may be kerosene, so on and so forth. So we have, these are used for the transportation of fuel. Third one is they are used in the compressors, okay, we have compressors, 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 as far as the compressors are concerned, in compressors we find these pressure vessels, okay. In the same way, the application of pressure vessels is like you have the transportation of milk, okay, transportation of milk and other products from the factories is done with the help of these pressure vessels, okay. So, the applications of these pressure vessels are wide, okay and their understanding is also very, very important. So we talked about the pressure vessels. The pressure vessels are the containers, which may be cylindrical in shape, which may be spherical in shape, which are used for holding the fluid, which is at a pressure greater than the atmospheric pressure, okay? So when we have, a, when we have fluid inside these vessels at a pressure greater than the atmospheric pressure, that pressure exerts force. That pressure exerts force on the walls of this on the walls of this uh, vessel. That's why we call them as the pressure vessels. Now, as far as the pressure vessels are concerned, we have two types of pressure vessels. We have thin walled pressure vessels and we have the thick walled pressure vessels. So the first type of pressure vessels we have as is given in the chapter as well, thin walled pressure vessel. And second type of pressure vessel we have is called the, the thick walled pressure vessels. Okay. We may be having thin walled pressure vessels and at the same time we have thick wall pressure vessels. We need to make a difference between the thin wall and the thick wall pressure vessels, okay? The theory for the thin wall and thick wall pressure vessels differs. The stress distribution in thin wall and thick wall pressure vessels is different, okay? The analysis for thick wall pressure vessels is quite different from the analysis of thin wall pressure vessels as we will see. But the question is, what are thin wall pressure vessels? See, as far as this pressure vessel is concerned, if you cut a section of this pressure vessel, then this pressure vessel will have some radius. Let's call this radius as R, okay? And this pressure vessel is made of some material, okay? It means it's made of some uh, GI sheets, okay? And those sheets will have some thickness. So it's essentially that you have, uh, you, we, have um, we, we have some sheets, we are having some GI sheets which have been bent and what we obtain is is, 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 is these pressure vessels, okay? So if you look at the cross-section of these pressure vessels, the cross-section of the pressure vessels will have some radius, and you call that radius as R. And all the pressure vessels are made of the material, okay? Uh, the material will have some thickness. You call that thickness as small t, okay? So the definition is if R by t If R by T ratio, if the ratio of radius to that of thickness is greater than or equal to 10. If R by T is greater than or equal to 10, then that pressure vessel is called thin wall pressure vessel as is given here. That thin wall refers to a vessel having an inner radius to wall thickness ratio of 10 or more. That's when R by T is greater than or equal to 10, we say that the pressure vessel is a thin wall pressure vessel, okay? So as far as the pressure vessels are concerned, uh, it's very important that we understand, first of all, we understand the, as far as the pressure vessels that have fluid inside, the fluid exerts force on the walls of this pressure vessel and the walls uh, tend to oppose the effect uh, created by the 
pressurized fluid inside the vessel. And the tendency is to nullify the effect because if the walls do not nullify the effect of the internal fluid, then essentially the internal fluid pressure will distort the entire pressure vessel and there will be a catastrophe or there will be a failure. So essentially we, 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 we need to be safe as far as the usage of the pressure vessel is concerned, okay? The pressure vessels are have to be very much safe. Uh, so whatever are the internal pressures developed that create the stresses in the inside, in, on the walls of this pressure vessel. So the pressure vessel should develop the stresses that can nullify the effect of the internal stresses created by the internal pressure. So internal pressure effect is to be nullified somehow by the, pressure created by the walls okay so how does that happen so for that we need to understand the theory of the pressure vessels how is the stress uh, distribution how are the stresses developed inside these uh, pressure vessels so first of all let's talk about the cylindrical pressure vessels this is very very important as far as the theory is concerned okay so as far as the cylindrical pressure vessels are concerned let's take out let's let's suppose that we are having a cylindrical pressure vessel whose radius is R and whose thickness is T. So we are talking, we are taking a cylindrical pressure vessel into consideration such that the cylindrical pressure vessel has, uh, has radius R and its thickness is small t. We define our Y axis along the axis of this vessel and rest of the two axes we define as X axis and the Z axis. Y axis has been defined as an axis which is, you know, uh, which is along the, which is the longitudinal axis or the axis of this cylinder. Okay. What we do, it says like uh, uh, because of the internal loadings, like we have inside this pressure vessel, there will be gas. There is some fluid. That fluid exerts pressure on the walls of this, on on the walls of this cylindrical vessel. So inside the the fluid inside the pressure vessel tends to move, tends to increase the radius of this pressure vessel okay so not only this so as far as the inside fluid is concerned the pressure exerted by the inside fluid tends to increase the radius of this vessel it tries to uh, you know it tries to make the pressure vessel bulge out okay not only that it also tries to increase the length of the pressure vessel okay because you have fluid inside this entire vessel so the pressure inside the fluid has the tendency of causing the elongation in the length as well. It's like you assume a balloon. You have a deflated balloon, okay? Now, when you inflate the bal balloon, when you, uh, when, you, when you inflate the bal balloon and air goes into the balloon, what happens to the diameter of the balloon? The diameter of the balloon increases as well as the length of the balloon increases. The, a deflated balloon, you can hold in your pocket. You can hold it in your hand. You can keep it in your pocket, a deflated balloon. But as far as an inflated balloon is concerned, its length and its diameter is more as compared to a deflated balloon. That simply gives us an indication that as far as the inside pressure is concerned, in a cylindrical vessel is concerned, the pressure inside the cylindrical vessels is concerned, the pressure inside the cylindrical vessels tends to increase, tends to increase the diameter of the vessel as well as the length of the pressure vessel. That's very important. So the effect of the fluid is that it tries to increase the length as well as it tries to increase the, 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 the diameter as well. Now, what has been done? A small element, a small element has been isolated, has been drawn on this, uh, on this vessel. We have a small element on this vessel. Now, as far as the small element is concerned, the stress distribution inside, the pressure inside the fluid will try to increase the diameter, okay? It will also try to increase the length. So if, as far as the length concept is concerned, as far as the concept of the length is concerned, it's very easy to visualize that on this stress element, because of the fluid pressure, the stresses will be created and the stresses will try to increase the length of this machine element. It will try to cause the elongation of this, uh, elongation of this element. The element that has been shown here, this element, as far as this element is concerned, this is a simply a cubical element. Now, what is this, cu as this cubical element? The, this cubical element, as far as the, the, the stresses, the longitudinal stresses are concerned, the elongation in the length 
is happening. So it means that this small element is being subjected to stresses and the stresses are along the y direction. This sigma that is happening, that is being exerted on this element along the longitudinal direction is represented as sigma two. This is called the longitudinal stress or the actual stress. This is important. So this stress is what we call as the longitudinal stress or we call this type of stress as an actual stress. So we have the longitudinal stress or what we call as the actual stress, okay? It happens, it's in the longitudinal direction or it's in the actual direction. Number two, if you look at the machine, if you look at this L, if you look at the entire uh, cylindrical pressure vessel, this cylindrical pressure vessel, you cut a half section out. Once you cut the half section out, this half section is in the form of a semicircle, okay? Now, as far as the semicircle is concerned, the semicircle is having the diameter, its radius is R, so its diameter will be 2 times R, okay? As far as 2 times R diameter is concerned, this 2 times R diameter, okay? As far as this, uh, this cylindrical vessel is concerned, what we do from this cylindrical vessel, in order to analyze another type of stress, First stress that we try to analyze is the longitudinal stress or the axial stress, which tries to cause the elongation in this machine element, which tries to cause elongation in the cylindrical pressure vessel. And we said that that stress is equal to sigma 2, and this sigma 2 is the axial or the longitudinal stress. But there is one more type of stress which is developed along, along the circumference. Okay, that stress is called sigma 1. This stress is very, very important. This is called circumferential stress or the hoop, hoop stress, okay? What we, how do we analyze, how do we visualize? First of all, the visualization of the stresses is very important. Before we draw some, you know, uh, what we call as the, you know, before we have some formulas for their cal calculation, okay? Before we quantize these stresses, their understanding is a must, their visualization is a must, how we actually, you know, how these stresses are developed inside the pressure vessels. That's very important. We don't have any problem in the understanding of, and students really uh, do not feel any sort of problem in understanding the sigma two. We don't have an issue with the sigma two. Sigma two is okay because we know that the fluid pressure tries to cause the elongation in the length. I have drawn an analogy with that of a balloon, balloon example. So there is the stress developed along the, uh, along the longitudinal axis, what we call as a longitudinal stress or the actual stress. But now there is one more type of stress. See, the inside fluid pressure, tries to increase the diameter of this, tries to increase, it exerts the pressure on this, on, on this, on, on this machine element and tries to increase its, increase its radius. So as far as the radius increase is concerned, the, the radius increase is concerned, as the radius of this uh, cylindrical pressure vessel uh, increases, the surfaces, which are the, the internal surfaces, they exert pressure on, they exert stresses on one another what we call as a circumferential or the hoop stress. What do we mean by the circumferential or the hoop stress? In order to understand them, what we do, you cut a section, you cut a half section out of the cylindrical pressure vessel that is here. The radius of this pressure vessel is R, therefore its diameter will be two times R, okay? It's from the center to the inner surface. Now, as far as this pressure is concerned, this pressure is being exerted on this, in this direction as is given over here, as is given here, so the pressure is exerted by the fluid in this direction. So what is happening? This surface is being, it, it, this surface is being, it, there, there is a tendency that the surface is being pushed in this direction, in minus x axis direction. But this is only the half surface. There will be half portion of the surface will be in this direction. There will be half portion of the surface in this direction, okay? So the pressure on it will be in this direction, okay? Pressure will be in this direction. So the fluid pressure is trying to move this half surface in this direction along plus x axis direction. So at the interface where the two surfaces have been, where we have drawn this section out here, that is at this very surface and at this very surface, there will be the stresses generated and those stresses we represent as sigma one. The stresses are represented as sigma one. And this stress is called the circumferential stress or the hoop stress. Because you see the circumferential or the hoop stress, it is created at the circumference, okay? It's created at the circumference. Why this stress is created? Because the tendency of this, because of the tendency of the internal pressure to increase the radius and the tendency of the another portion, another half section of this, of the cylindrical vessel to overcome the effect produced by this pressure, there will be stress at the interface. And that stress is called sigma one. 
the stress is what you call as the uh, the stress is what we call as the circumferential stress or the hoop stress now uh, in order to see as far as the hoop stress is concerned inside let's suppose that on this surface on this surface whose uh, thickness is small t we are not doing anything with the thickness but the element has been cut along y direction let's suppose it's its width is very very small that's equal to dy therefore the area of this small element will be t into dy this will be the area okay now on this area we are having stress of sigma 1 therefore the force on this in this direction in the direction of x axis will be area multiplied by sigma 1 okay this stress is not only this force is not only at this cross section this force is also at this cross section Therefore, the total force along x axis will be 2 times 2t dy into sigma 1. Okay, this is the total force that is created by the hoop stress along x axis. Okay, this along positive x axis, therefore, we'll write this as plus. Now, as far as the force is concerned, the force is the internal force is created by the fluid pressure P, and this pressure P is, is on. Uh, is acting on a curved surface okay if you take the projections of this curve, curved area curved surface then its projection will be in the form of a rectangle such that the length of the rectangle is 2r and the width of the rectangle is dy therefore the area of the rectangle projected rectangle i am meaning to say the area of the projected rectangle over which this uh, pressure is acting the area will be its 2r multiplied by 2r multiplied by dy this is the projected rectangular area on this area we are having pressure p so therefore this is the force that is created by the internal pressure internal for internal pressure so as far as this internal pressure is concerned internal pressure create causes this much amount of the force and this force is along minus x axis therefore we write this as minus okay but this machine element does not get displaced along x axis it neither moves along plus x axis nor it moves along minus x axis and that should uh, actually that should be actually the case for equilibrium because if there is a movement along x axis then essentially means that the pressure vessel is deforming and that should not happen so the resultant of the forces the force which is then uh, which is created the force is internal force created by the pressure in response to the force or pressure force there is a force created by there it simply means that the sum of all these forces should be equal some of these forces should be equal to zero this is a force created by stress this is a force created by the internal pressure when you do simplification you write sigma one the hoop stress is equal to pressure radius divided by the thickness pr by t this is very very important uh, so as far as the circumferential stress or the hoop stress is concerned the formula for it is pr divided by t so this is the formula for our circumferential stress or the hoop stress now we have to discuss the longitudinal stress so now after deriving this what we call as the circumferential stress or the hoop stress let's talk about the equilibrium along the y direction okay because we said that in the pressure vessel there will be two types of stresses one will be the stress sigma one what we call as the circumferential stress but there will also be the stress along the longitudinal y direction the stress what we call as the longitudinal stress let's see how we can calculate how we can quantize this longitudinal stress now again let's take a pressure vessel element again initially the first element that we took we have we we have taken a sectional element in order to understand the hoop stress we took a sectional element like this now let's simply draw a section perpendicular to the y-axis okay take a section perpendicular to the y-axis so if we take a section perpendicular to the y-axis the sectional element that will come to us will be in this form now internal fluid is also exerting pressure that is trying to cause the change in length of this uh, pressure vessel so it means the whatever be the internal force should create the pressure and the force should be created in order to increase the force is being created by the internal fluid such that there is a length increase so length increase means if this is your y-axis and this is your minus y-axis okay so a part of this 
cylindrical pressure vessel will be moving along minus y axis and a part of this will be moving along plus y axis only then there will be the increase in the length okay so it means if you take a small element if you take the circumference out if you take this if you take this circumference out so on this circumference this circumference it's if you if you if you, if you cut the section and you see this circumference its thickness is t if you open it up it will be in the it will come out in the form of a rectangle it will come out in the form of a rectangle such that such that the width of this rectangle will be equal to the it will be equal to the form it will be 2 pi r it will be equal to 2 pi r and as far as the thickness is concerned the thickness is concerned it will be equal it will be equal t okay so it, it means it means the force is being created by the internal pressure along y axis okay and this section will have one more section on its right hand side because we, we are cutting this section we are drawing a section out here we are taking a sectional plane here on its right hand side there will be one more portion of this there will be one more portion of this cylindrical pressure vessel so this pressure vessel because of the internal pressure this pressure vessel because of the internal pressure is trying to move in this direction okay but there it so it as it's trying to move in this direction another portion of this cylindrical pressure vessel we will try to move in in this direction okay so it means at this circumference at this element at this boundary whose thickness is t and whose area is 2 pi r into t 2 pi r into t there will be stress created and that stress is equal to as is given here sigma 2 okay sigma 2 is the stress created at created at this boundary created at the boundary in order to nullify the effect of the pressure force in increasing the length so pressure is exerting how much force the force exerted by the pressure will be the force exerted by since the fluid is inside and this entire space is filled with a fluid the entire area is filled with a fluid having pressure p therefore if we multiply pressure with this entire area that is pi r square p into pi, pi r square this will give us the force exerted by the force exerted by the pressure along y axis so this force is trying to cause this force will try p into as given here p into pi r square is the force created by the internal pressure and this internal pressure will try to move it in this direction and the another portion which is on the right hand side in this direction since we are analyzing this portion so on this portion the internal pressure will try to move it along minus y direction therefore the force is along minus y direction we are writing this as minus p pi r square in response to the force created by the pressure this machine element at its boundary will produce the force equal to sigma 2 pi r into t along plus y direction such that the resultant has to be equal to zero if you do simple calculations we find sigma 2 is equal to pr by t look at the difference sigma 1 is equal to pr by t sigma 2 is equal to pr by 2t now as far as this sigma 2 is concerned this is your longitudinal stress this is longitudinal stress and as far as the sigma 1 is concerned this is our circumferential stress or hoop stress now if you look the formula for both is two except that circumferential stress is twice the longitudinal stress longitudinal stress is only half so it means if you look at the pressure vessels if you look at any pressure cylindrical pressure vessel like this in in a cylindrical pressure vessel because of the internal fluid pressure there will be stresses that will try to increase the length of this machine element there will be stresses inside the material of this uh, of this uh, pressure vessel in response to the pressure which tries to increase its diameter but this circumferential stress this circumferential stress is given as pr by t and this longitudinal stress formula is pr by 2t which is more circumferential stress is more as compared to the longitudinal stress that's why if you look at your if you look at the gas cylinders at your home okay you have a gas cylinder at home okay it's also a pressure vessel now the, as far as the gas cylinder is concerned you often see that you have two portions which are joined together and its welding is welding is circumferential welding the gas cylinders are joined like this you will never see a gas cylinder which has a welding like this 
which has a longitude which is longitudinally weld gas cylinders are not longitudinally weld they are weld along the circumferences the reason is because this truss the stress in this direction is the stress is more as compared to the stresses which are generated longitudinally so the tendency of the gas cylinder to blast circum circumferentially is more than its tendency to blast longitudinally so that's why the reinforcement is provided circumferentially not the longitudinal so i hope you will re repeat whatever we have discussed today and tomorrow we will again repeat it and we'll try to understand more concepts from uh, this uh, from the from from this combined loading